Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Prophet Nom Shebungane from I Am Church. Um, it's so exciting to be here with you today. I'll be sharing the restoring word. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we are focusing on relationships. I've been married to my husband for over 19 years now. So there's just a bit of information that I think would assist you as you are building your relationship. I'll be focusing mostly today on expectations. I'm going to be speaking about expectations. So do uh, just sit in with me and be blessed. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God Almighty, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this word. I thank you, Lord God Almighty, for wisdom. I thank you for revelation knowledge. Help us, O oh God Almighty, to grasp this information and help us to practice what we have learned in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So what I'm going to share with you about, I just want to first mention the difference between standards and expectations. You know, a lot of us mix our standards with expectation, but there is a difference between standards and expectations. What are standards? Standards are guidelines about what you will accept in the present moment. So it is guidelines that are leading you in what you can accept in the present moment in the now what is it that you are expecting what is it that you can accept in the now so it has to do with your values and your belief it has to do with your attitude and perspective on life for instance if my standards is that i want to be married to a christian guy that is a standard i want somebody with a sense of humor that is a standard so there are standards and standards one of the things that i would like to say to you is that never be in a place where you compromise your standards when you compromise your standards you are compromising yourself because standards are who you are. The people that you surround yourself with are based on your standards. The Bible speaks to saying that what relationship does darkness have with the light? What relationship do you have with the things of the world when you are a Christian? So that is a standard. There are things that are there and it is a standard. I will not compromise. I will not find myself marrying a person who is not a Christian because one of the things that I said to myself, the basic, this person must be loving the Lord. They must have a relationship with the Lord and that is a standard. So standards are who you are. They are who you are. They are based on your principles and it is something that you should never compromise. So it is possible that your partner can meet your standards yet not your expectations. It is possible that you can meet somebody who meets your standard. So it is basic. You click, you, 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 you have that list and you tick it to saying, yes, this person has this, yes. This person has this, yes. So you find that this list that you had, especially ladies, there's this list that you would have. You would say you want a person like this. They meet your standards, yet not your expectations. So today I just want to go further on expectations. Expectations are what we want to happen in the future. So your expectations are based on future. They are futuristic. They, they may be a, a short term, a long term, but they are literally something that you are expecting from the future. So those are expectations. So it is something that you wish someone could do right? It is something that you wish someone would do. It is an event that you would want to see coming to pass. So we all have expectation. There's nobody who can say to me, mm, no, I don't expect anything in life. As long as you are living, you've got expectations. Whether it is expect you are realizing the fact that you do or accepting the fact that you do. So we all have expectations in life, whether we realize it or not. The first thing is that we have uncommunicated expectations. The second, we have communicated expectations. So as much as you have these expectations in your relationship, have you communicated them? Or it is things that are within you that you have never communicated to your partner. Remember I said there is nothing wrong with having expectations, but there is something wrong having expectations, yet you do not want to communicate them. How do you expect somebody to meet your expectations when this person does not know what you want from them? 
So it is very important that as you have these expectations, share them with your partner. Let me make an example of uncommunicated ex expectations. If, for instance, I look at my husband and say, you know what, my husband is so unreasonable. Why am I saying that? It is because my husband does not assist me with chores at home. My husband does not assist me with laundry. My husband does not assist me with children. It is something that I expect, but have I ever communicated with him? And you'd find that it is a no. And in, in men, maybe your, your partner expects you to cook for them. Maybe your partner expects you to call them. He says, you know, my wife is so unreasonable. Why is your wife so unreasonable? You know, she never makes the first call. She does not call me to find out how am I doing. She does not do one, two, three, four, five. It is something that this person is saying, yet there was never a time where he communicated to his wife to saying, I expect one, two, three, four, five. So what happens then in this is that when expectations are not met, perception changes. If my expectations are not met, the perception towards my husband changes automatically. And it is something that happens very gradually. It is not something that is going to happen now, but somehow my perception of him changes because of something that he has not done. Not because he knew that he has not done it. No, he knows that he has not done it, but I expected him to do it. I expected him to know. <laughs> so it's something that really happens in relationships. I expected you to do this, but did you communicate these expectations? Did you communicate with me? And you'd find that person never communicated. So what happens then is that there would be disappointment in my heart. My, my, my emotions, I, I get into a place where I am disappointed. You would find yourself in a place where you are sad or even angry at your partner. So what is happening is that expectations plus processing develops an attitude. Expectations pro plus processing develops an attitude. And this attitude is something that you would see. You would see in our actions now that something has happened. There's no hello honey in the morning. There's no tea in the morning. What has happened? Why has my attitude changed? It is because my expectations were not met. So if you are somebody who is here and listening to me, You've got those expectations, yet you have not communicated them to your partner. Surely you will be in a place of disappointment. Surely you will be in a place of sad, sadness and even sometimes anger. Surely your attitude towards your partner is going to change because there are expectations that are not met. What am I saying then to you? I'm saying be a better person communicate your expectations. So when we speak about you communicating your expectations, we are saying tell your partner of what you want. So as much as there are things, there are expectations, you need to identify are these reasonable or are they unrealistic? There are things that we expect in our partners that are really not realistic. There are things that you are expecting him to do, but if you were to be honest with yourself, you'd get into a place where you see, but I was not realistic concerning this manner. So you need to express your needs to your partner. And also as you are telling your partner of these needs, you need to listen to them. What is their perspective on what you have shared? Be willing to hear their perspective. What am I saying? If, for instance, I'm expecting my husband to collect me at work at 2 o'clock, and I'm, 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 I'm saying to him, hubby, please collect me at 2 o'clock. So I've communicated. But I need to hear his perspective, uh, perspective on what I'm saying to him. So if he says to me, I hear you, you want me to collect you at this hour. However, this is how my day looks like today. And therefore, I can only be able to pick you up at a normal time that I normally pick you up, which is a half past four in the afternoon. So he is telling me that, no, I hear you, but look at it all. Holistically, this is what is happening. Consider me in your expectations. Do you consider your partner in these expectations that you have? Or is it about you? I think one of the most saddest things, or rather one of the most interesting things about expectations is that they have to do with you. It is something that you want. 
It has to do with you. And sometimes we become so selfish that we make a relationship about us. One of the things that I always say to a person is that a relationship is relate into ship. There has to be a relationship. There has to be a relating factor into this thing that we have. So after having heard my partner's perspective on my expectations that I have shared, we need to get into a place of compromise. So he's saying to me, I can only be able to collect you at half past four. Then I go back to him and saying, at least babes, today can you just try a bit to be here at half past three? So we get into a place of compromise. Relationships about compromise. Relationships are about compromise. You must be somebody who is willing to compromise something so that you get somewhere in your relationship. So you get into a place where you reevaluate your expectations. You get into a place of saying, okay, I'm reevaluating. This is what I was expecting from this person. And I see it is not possible. For your relationship to move, to evolve, you need to be somebody who continually reevaluate their expectations towards their partners. So your expectations must be reasonable. What are reasonable expectations? Just basic reasonable expectations that you can expect from your partner. One of them is respect. It is okay to have that expectation and communicate, I expect you to respect me. And he will say, I expect you to respect me too. And having said that, you need to ask your partner, what is respect to you? You know, one of the things that I had to get into in my relationship to really realize is that I may think I know what respect is, but maybe that is not what he considers respect. So when I'm saying I expect you to respect me, let me go further to saying, do you know how do I consider it that you respect me? By one, two, three, four, five. So when a person says, I need you to respect me, you do not respect me as a wife, just go back to them and say, what is respect to you? so that you can align to that which your partner is saying. There must be commitment, equal commitment in a relationship. Both parties must be equally committed in a relationship. And commitment has got to be intentional. You know, one of the things that is really important is intentionality in a relationship. Nothing happens by chance. You don't want a hazardous relationship where literally everything about you guys is spontaneous. But there has to be things that literally you are planning. You are committed to praying together. You are committed to date nights. You are committed to raising children in this manner. That is commitment. And commitment must be intentional. So, Quality time together, supporting one another during difficult times, having empathy for one another. Those are things that are literally standard in a relationship and you are saying, these are expectations that I have and these are reasonable expectations. Remember I said there are those that are not realistic. A not realistic expectation is me telling my husband, listen, can we please nec uh, by next week go to Rome? That is not reasonable. Because it means, firstly, it, uh, it affects our finances. Secondly, do we have visit visas to go? So you need to look at these things as much as ladies, we are influenced by the things that we watch. That we love romantic movies. And sometimes the, these things that we watch are not really influencing us well. They get us into a place where our expectations are not realistic. It's good to look at a couple and saying, you know, I love this couple. I love what they do together. But after having done that, be realistic and face your relationship to saying, but this is where we are with my husband. You cannot expect your one-year relationship be the same as somebody who is be, has been in a relationship for 19 years. So be realistic. Be realistic with your situation. This is where you are now. Be realistic with your finances. Be realistic that this is where we are right now. I may want to live in a mansion. I may want one, two, three, four, five. But based on where we are, I have got to be realistic. So it is very, very necessary for you to look at yourself and do this thing. So unrealistic 
uh, uh, expectation requires you to, to really be in a place where you pay attention. Have, pay attention and be real with yourself. Are you real? Are you sure this is what you want? What you are expecting of this person is it something that is possible. And you know, as I said before, unmet expectation, they literally change one's perception over another. And one of the things that I had to do with that was to go back to the father. Remember, this relationship is a relationship based on good foundation with Christ being the solid rock. Going back to God and saying, Lord, am I being reasonable? Spirit of the living God, speak to me in this area. Read the word of God as a Christian. Read the word of God concerning marriage. Pastor D has already shared with you guys the foundation of marriage. He has shared with you guys the foundation of marriage. He has shared with you quite a lot. If you have not listened to those, go back and, and just listen to them and you'd get some points. So you must read the word of God. Be somebody that is prayerful. Seek counsel. You know, one of the things that I have seen happening in the body of Christ is that Christians die alone. It is not necessary for you to keep everything to yourself. Find somebody that can counsel you concerning marriage. You know, it's very good to have mentors in life. Have a mentor in a way. This one is your mentor concerning your marriage, where you can go to this person, and this person is not jealous of your marriage. Of your marriage. This person can, can speak to you to saying, Nomle, here, my friend, you are not really okay. Here, your expectations of him are not good. And after having heard that, I need to go back to my partner and saying, I am sorry. One of the things that are standard in a relationship, it is for you to get into a place where you admit when you are wrong. Say, I'm sorry that I have, was expecting one, two, three of you. And I've seen that I was not reasonable. Please forgive me. Another thing is to say, I thank you. Thank you for what you have been doing. I spoke to this friend of mine whose husband traveled for a week for a very first time in their relationship and they've been married for over 10 years. And she's saying to me, you know, for the first time, I got to see how much of help my husband is, how he is running our home. And when he came back, I got to appreciate him a lot. You need to say thank you when expectations are met. And you need to say sorry when you see yourself having done something wrong. Thank you so much for having listened to this. And I hope that you are really, really blessed. And I hope that you have learned. If you would like to ask any questions, the details are going to be provided for you. We will be taking your questions and we will be answering them on the next episode. We would like to thank you for everything. As I am closing, I'd like to just share a word of prayer with you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for every person that has listened. I thank you, Lord God Almighty, for those that are in marriages and are realizing, Heavenly Father, of their expectations, whether they are realistic or not realistic, whether they are being reasonable, oh Lord God. I thank you, Heavenly Father, that even the expectations that we have that we had not communicated. Today we have learned, O oh Lord God Almighty, that we need to, to communicate our expectations. I pray, Heavenly Father, for marriages to flourish. I pray, O oh Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that may we be in a place where we mutually respect one another, where we are there for one another and, and, and supporting one another. Help us, Holy Spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for those ones, O oh Lord God, that are in relationships and are looking now to saying, where am I in this? Even though those that are going to be entering into relationships, they're in a better place, O oh Lord God Almighty, to see that I must communicate my expectations. Help us, O oh Heavenly Father, that may we not compromise our standards, even as we are looking for marriages, even as we are looking for partners. Let us not compromise the core things. We thank you, Father, and we give you glory in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you, saints, for having been part of this session. It was really great to speak to you. May you continue to be blessed. If you would like more information, we are there. If you would like to give, there's information that is there. We thank you so much, those that are continuing to give. If it was not for you, we would not be able to do this continually. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.